During the beginning days of 3D RPGs on the original PlayStation, Squaresoft took a bet on creating several new IPs, each of them with relative success. Brave Fencer Masashi was one of those experiments which managed to gather a small cult following thanks to its quirky gameplay and creative combat design. But what seemed like a one-shot at the time managed to garner a sequel on the PS2, helmed by Tetsuya Nomura, thanks to the rising popularity as game designer after the success of the original Kingdom Hearts. Nomura took the approach of designing the game as a remake, but with his own vision of what Musashi could have been at the time. In short, Musashi Samurai Legends should be considered a remake, or a reboot of sorts, instead of a sequel. And this is what we got. From the land of the rising sun, a lone warrior was catapulted to a magical realm. It was a world on the brink of catastrophe, and its people called desperately for a hero. Now, only Musashi can thwart the mad designs of a ruthless corporation. One man, one chance, one destiny. Masashi Samurai Legends tells the story of young Princess Masella of the city of Antium, carried atop the back of a magical flying whale. Mycella's kingdom is being threatened by invasion of Gandrake Enterprises, and thus Mycella was left no choice but to hope for a hero from another world to come to her aid. While performing the ritual of summoning, she is interrupted and Masashi, our brave summoned hero, is brought to this world far from its intended location. Masashi is taken under the wing of Master Mew, and under his training Masashi is ready to take on Gandrake and their legion of wrongdoers. Masashi's objective is to rescue Mycella and the other maidens that protect the magical swords that will restore the magical whale's power, and save this world so he can return to his own. It's a very simple plot to follow, which is a shame, because the game has some really interesting characters to build on that never get any depth worked into their personalities. Masashi himself isn't a very interesting protagonist, and his personality may turn some people off the game entirely, as he can eventually become quite annoying. The story and characters are average overall, as a little more time put into their development could have done wonders to the story and setting. The voice acting that's present is acceptable at best. There are some good performances for the most part, but Masashi isn't too great, as he is constantly on a surfer dude bro attitude which doesn't connect well with the rest of the game, and detracts a bit from the experience. I'm all set, whisker dude! But I think it's due to its quirkiness in character that makes this game memorable, although a bit less so than the original. Fortunately, Masashi's gameplay is where the game shines brightest. The game offers plenty in the way of content to give the player a sense of pride and accomplishment for quite a few hours. You'll spend the most of your time on Anthium, which is deserted at the start, but as you progress it starts to become bustling with people thanks to Masashi gathering the villagers contained in spheres throughout the game. By freeing the villagers, Masashi gains access to more services in the city, such as item stores, a smithy for upgrades, and a appraiser for your dungeon items and even for unlocking extra abilities for Masashi like double jumps, wall climbing, among other useful skills. All of this makes exploration feel extremely rewarding, as there's a direct correlation to your progression as you free more villagers, making dungeon exploration a bit more bearable. Dungeons are simplistic in layout, allowing for easy navigation, however they don't allow for interesting set pieces or anything extremely remarkable in terms of diverse scenery. At the end of most dungeons you'll have to face a boss creature. Some of the fights actually end up being pretty interesting, such as the Spider Queen, in which you need to use spider webs as a trampoline to get to a higher platform, in order to jump onto the belly of the spider that's hanging upside down from the ceiling and hit her weak spot to make her fall down. Overall, boss fights are likely the highlight of the dungeons themselves. While the exploration leaves a bit to be desired, the combat is where the dungeons and bosses stand out. When not exploring the confines of a dungeon from random villagers, combat is what you'll spend most of the dungeon time engaged in. Enemies range from dungeon monsters and gandrake minions, and Masashi fights using simple combo mechanics similar to how Kingdom Hearts works. As Masashi defeats enemies, he earns experience which allows him to level up. Upon gaining a level, you can boost your desired stats, choosing to spend the points individually, or just follow the prompts the game shows you by choosing to either spread stats evenly, focusing on offense or defense, or improving your copy capabilities. 
The prompts are mostly there for people who don't want to mess with stat point allocations and I think that's fine, as there's people who don't enjoy that sort of thing, but the game didn't even need to let you have both options, and that makes it a fantastic, albeit minor, quality of life aspect that could have been completely absent, but luckily isn't. During combat, you have access to light attacks and heavy attacks, which you can combo between the two, a parry move with your sword, and the screen clearing attack which can be used by depleting the special meter. In fact, most abilities Masashi has at his disposal use this meter, which, like health, can be refilled by obtaining sphere drops from enemies. Masashi's key gameplay mechanic, however, is his copy ability. Much like Kirby and Mega Man, Masashi can copy the abilities of enemies he defeats, granting him several useful abilities to use against his opponents. While guarding, a gauge fills up next to an enemy's health, and when it fills up completely, when pressed at the correct time, Masashi does a counter and steals the ability. However, unlike the original game where abilities were temporary and you could only hold one at a time, Masashi gets to keep these permanently. At a certain point in the game, you'll have to start managing the abilities at your disposal in the menu, so collecting abilities adds a layer of customization to fit your personal playstyle, or if you just want to go to the optimal abilities and destroy everything and break the game. As Masashi progresses throughout the game, he also collects new swords, which grant him additional combo attacks and abilities, with greater power and utility, both for combat and puzzle solving in dungeons. At certain points, you'll be required to escort one of the maidens with you through a dungeon, and while that may seem frustrating to hear, as escort quests are usually some of the most tedious work you have in a game, while you are unable to do some actions, you can still attack and defend, although your attacks are a bit limited. The small touches of animation while carrying a maiden are nice, such as launching her up into the air for a quick attack, are a nice bonus and add a bit of variety to the missions. You can also let her down on the ground and attack as you normally would, with the only downside being that they do not follow you until you pick them up again. For a PS2 RPG, Masashi Samurai Legend boasts some pretty striking visuals. The characters are overly stylized and really pop in contrast to the scenery. The cell shaded treatment makes this game stand out as a looker to this day, and the brightly painted world coupled with the nice character animations makes it stand out next to some of the more average RPGs on the system. The soundtrack is really strong in some areas, not much so in others. Antheon's theme is catchy, and it's a good thing that it's not annoying, as this is the theme you'll hear the most in the entirety of the game. boss themes could have been better, but overall the soundtrack is pretty spot on. But the one that simply takes the cake, the one thing that this game could have lived completely without, is the Beach Boy Surfer theme from the intro. Why Masashi needed to be a samurai surfer is beyond me. Perhaps Nomura thought this was a nice way to make it stand out. Maybe the zippers weren't enough. In conclusion, Masashi Samurai Legend gets a gold medal. It's not a great game, but it's still good. It could use some improvements in many areas, namely the dungeon design and some polish on movement, but overall, it's an enjoyable experience. And even though it has some flaws, it's not enough to detract from what would otherwise be considered a hidden gem on the PS2. Thank you for watching. If you have any RPG suggestions you'd like to see covered on the channel, please leave a comment below. This has been Zeldrek, and I'll see you next time.